What's up? We're going to do a little unboxing and review of this uh, emergency crank radio. I see the same radio under a lot of names. This one is the Asukwe. Uh, I think some of them have a little bit different guts, but the outside might be pretty similar. Um, let's look at the box real quick. It has some features mentioned on it here. This uh, has an AM FM NOAA radio. NOAA stands for the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. So uh, this is where your real uh, emergency information is probably going to be coming from. Uh, don't know what the new design means, so I don't know what the uh, old design is. Uh, glad it has a brighter, brighter flashlight though. This uh, 1000 milliamp hour charger is going to be cool. Um, great that it has solar power. Great that it has crank power. Um, you can charge it via USB and you can charge your, uh, your, your phone and other devices with it as well. Let me back this video out a little bit and we will unbox this bad boy. All right, here we go. So, pulling it out of the box, we've got micro USB cable. We have the radio itself. And bubble wrap. Can't forget the bubble wrap. As well as some instructions. So let's go through the instruction booklet here. We'll use this as the... Uh, narration for the video here so first off we've got using the flashlight press the flashlight switch to turn it on uh this hasn't been charged yet so i don't know how well it's gonna work is this it all right looks like it turn the flashlight to turn it on all right we got some juice in there cool um push the flashlight switch to turn it off just did that all right solar hand crank usb power and solar power Play, place product in average sunlight for approximately 10 to 12 hours. The red power indicator illuminates when charging. All right, so the red power indicator is right here. Let's see if we can get it to turn on. There it is. Okay, so aiming it toward the light, that little red light comes on there so you know it's actually charging. Let's see if it comes on as well. I'm cranking it. Yep. So let's talk about the crank real quick. There's quite a bit of resistance on this. Uh, that's a good thing. You don't want it to be, you know, super quick. You, that resistance is what's generating energy. Uh, you can't really go by how much energy it's creating by how um, how much resistance there is on there. But from my experience with uh, cranks like this, it seems like the more resistance, the more power you're generating. So I would say this is pretty good, uh, considering it's a, just a small little little radio here. Uh, I'll mention it says uh, place product in average sunlight. I wouldn't put this in direct sunlight. Not if I can avoid it. Uh, if you really need to, uh, maybe you're moving um, in and out of shadow. You know, being in direct sunlight for short periods of time is all right. But I've learned the hard way from some solar battery packs that keeping them in hot areas or directly in the sun can ruin them very quickly. Uh, so I'd advise against that. All right. So the tuning LED. I guess we've got a tuning LED right here. Let's see here. Um, oh, let's not go back to the to the tuner yet. So the hand crank power. This says you can crank it either clockwise or counterclockwise. Uh, three to five minutes to activate the internal battery for internal use, or when the unit has been idle for more than 60 days. The red power indicator illuminates when cranking. Okay, so that's taken care of. Um, it's good to know that you can crank it both ways. Let's see if the resistance is the same both ways. Feels the same. I don't know why it would be different, but checking that anyway. All right. Moving right along in this instruction manual. For subsequent charges, turn the handle crank for two to three minutes to produce 15 to 20 minutes and continue continuous light for three LEDs. 15 to 20 minutes of continuous radio usage, three to five minutes of talk time. All right. Let's test something real quick. Let's turn this light on. Let's see how this affects it. Alright, I don't know if you can tell in the video, but it's definitely getting brighter as I'm cranking it. Alright. Cool. US, USB port charging. Insert one end of the charging cord into the micro USB jack and the other end of the computer USB port. The red power indicator illuminates when the uh, NIMH battery is charging. Let's turn this light off. Okay, so that's just information you already know. And charging your cell phone, you know how to do that, but let's let's check it out anyway. All right, so we got a port on the back here. Pop this little rubber guy open. Uh, this is going to be your input charge. This is going to be your output charge. 
I just happen to have a device right here with a micro USB cable. Even though that's grown obsolete, I'm sure you can put a USB A male to a USB C male and achieve the same thing. Plug this guy in here. All right, do I have to push a button? So just plugging it in, it doesn't look like I'm getting a charge here, otherwise there'd be a little lightning bolt there. Now sometimes it won't have the charging indicator there, even though it's being charged, if the amount of charge is very, very low. So, make sure we're plugged in real well here. The instructions don't mention any other buttons to push, and uh, I don't see any either. I know that this guy works with micro USB. Can't vouch for the cable. Let's give it a crank. All right, USB cable is plugged in. Crank is going. Nothing else is on, and I don't see any. Uh, I don't see any any, any indication of uh, of charging. So I'll be right back. I'm gonna check this cable. All right, I tested the cable and it seems to be working just fine, but uh, perhaps this needs more of a charge in it before it'll actually charge a device. Um, I will plug this guy in for a while and then update the written review or put it down in the comments on YouTube uh, whenever I get around to it, I guess. All right, moving along. There's some specification here about size and weight. Uh, 128 by 60 by 45 millimeters. This is a Note 4. This is an old device. This is how the emergency radio compares to it in size. Obviously, it's significantly thicker. Probably one, two, three, four times as thick, but it's smaller in dimensions than a Note. Uh, probably about the same size of a iPhone or something. That's why I got this. I have another emergency radio, but it's about the size of a lunchbox. It's pretty good for at-home usage, but if I want to put this in my bug-out bag or an EDC bag or something just to have it there, um, the lunchbox size guy is just not going to work. Let's try this radio. Antenna up. Cool. Alright, that works. I'm not sure where to... Here we go, weather band. There we go. 16 miles an hour, gusting to 26 miles an hour. Hit Glendale, wind was south. Yeah, you can zone out to that and fall right asleep. Anyway, so we got the NOAA radio action going on here on the weather band. Tuner is pretty, uh, pretty nice to use. Um, again, with with the uh, same with the crank. Sometimes you get zero resistance on that. Same with the tuner. Sometimes you get zero resistance on that. It makes it really difficult to tune in here. This is a relatively good amount of resistance there in terms of uh, trying to zero in on a station there on a frequency. So I don't know what else to say about this. It's kind of rubberized. I really like that. Um, this thing says it's second generation, so this is uh, supposedly an upgraded version of this bad boy. Uh, I don't know. I like the color. I like the size. Um... Going right into my EDC bag or my bug out bag, and uh, I like it. I'm going to uh, use it for a while and see if there are any updates that need to be made on uh, usage of it. Uh, if I have any complaints or anything, I'll let you know. I'm going to put an affiliate link to this in the description on the YouTube channel. So uh, if you have an opportunity to uh, purchase this, if you use that link, it'll help me out. It won't cost you any more. Thanks for watching the review. Have a great day.